what a do baby and welcome to the video that so many of you have been requesting the ultimate death slinger guide and by ultimate of course i mean the basic death slinger guide now i know you all want to yeehaw your way around the fog doing things like this But let's be real for a second. I can't have y'all running around the fog slinging your boom boom stick around with this kind of accuracy and precision without giving a rundown of the basics first. So let's get this party started with the basic death slinger guide. So as many of you know, Kid Rock is a range killer in Dead by Daylight. He utilizes his devil's paintbrush, aka the spear gun, to spear survivors through the chest and pull them closer to his body so that he can deliver sweet, sweet justice by smacking them in the face with the handle of his broomstick. So even though Yeehaw Peepaw looks like he's somebody that's pretty simple to pick up and to use, there's actually a lot that goes into the uses of his gun, from aiming down sights, to shooting, to reeling people in, and for the uses of the chain. Daddy Yeehaw also has a bad knee due to his old age, causing him to be a 110 movement speed killer. For those of you who are a little wet behind the ears, that means that he's a slower than most killers in Dead by Daylight, which brings you to the one ultimate tip that I could give you to being good with this gilf, and that is to use your gun! Now, I don't want to see any of you slackers running up to survivors just m one them. I want you to study this bad boy. I want you to know this beauty like the back of your hand. I want you to be the harpoon. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Supreme Overlord, aren't I going to lose all of my games if I just go for M2s? The answer to this question is yes. Yes, you are. But come on now, y'all, let's get real for a second. If y'all wanted to play someone just to simply go through and destroy all of your opponents, then you would have picked someone to learn like Blight or Nurse or Spirit. But no, you decided that being cool was more important than getting a 4K every single match. So yes, you will lose many, many, many games, but learning how this weapon works will drastically improve your gameplay with this absolute daddy. So here are a couple of things that I want you to learn and to burn into your beautiful little brains so that next time I see you guys playing this killer out in the fog, you will be destroying people and I will be very, very proud. Now, ever since God himself decided that he needed to beat our Messiah in the head with a nerf hammer, he lost his ability to instascope, which means that we, the chosen ones, must calculate the speed of survivors running divided by the time it takes to aim down sights and find the square root of when to fire. Huh? In basic terms, it takes Death Slinger 0.4 seconds to lift up his gat and go boom. So make sure a survivor isn't about to run around a corner before you fire, causing you to miss. Understanding when you should or shouldn't shoot makes a difference between boosted babies and esports legends like us. This is the second time you have sent a team to Florida to lose to me! Another quick tip is to never, well, mostly never, hold your gun up for too long while aiming. Remember Poppy's bad knee? Well, he walks even slower, if you can imagine it, while aiming, so make sure that you're going for quick shots. Unlike Mother Huntress, Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. To reward you for being patient with your shots, Daddy Slinger rewards us for being as quick as possible with them so that survivors have less time to react. And something that really helps with this is to get a general idea of where your crosshair goes without needing to rely on aim down sights, which is typically in the center of your screen. This makes it so as soon as you raise that boomstick, you don't have to spend so much time lining up a shot and you can fire as fast as possible. Because remember folks, speed is the name of the game here. And now for some fun facts. So did you know that when you're aiming down at a survivor, they get an auditory warning that's a very high pitched ringing? Did you also know that reeling in survivors themselves doesn't actually cause the chain to break faster? The chain only breaks when the survivor is either struggling or when the chain is going through collision. Oh my God. And now that we got the basics of aiming down sights out of our sight, Shut up, Meg. Let's move on to the harpoon itself. So most people don't know that Papa's spear gun is both a hit scan and a projectile, depending on the distance from which you are sniping the survivors. Close to just about mid range, the harpoon is considered a hit scan, which means the survivors don't have much time to juke or react to your shots. Anything past the mid range point, the harpoon becomes a projectile, which means those crafty little motherfuckers. 
I mean, those really good survivor players can easily bait out or dodge your shots. So get a feel for when a shot is a hit scan or a projectile will be crucial. And unlike our mommy Huntress, that slinger does have a limited range on his attack, which means you will have to learn how close you have to get to make sure survivors go from the safe zone to holy mother <laughs> zone. Our Heavenly Father's M2 only has a distance of about 18 meters, which if you're a visual learning baby like I am, it's about from the edge of the street of Haddonfield to the other side of the street. And now that we have the basics of how to snipe those mother <laughs> now that we got the basics of how to snipe those survivors like fish in a barrel, it's time that we learn how to reel that fish in. Otherwise, we won't be eating tonight and we will starve. Now, there are three things I want you to learn about Kid Rock's reeling ability when it comes to his gun in order to improve your gameplay. You don't have to move backwards or forwards to reel survivors in. Simply by holding your power button, you can start reeling in survivors. A lot of people also like to ask me, Oh, LeBron James of Deathslinger, why do you walk backwards while reeling? Please bless us with thy knowledge. And well, the answer is quite simple. Really? <laughs> Um, when you're walking backwards or really in a survivor, it causes the survivor to have less control, lowering the chances of them getting stuck on those pesky terrains on the map. When walking forward, survivors have more control going left or right, allowing them to get stuck on terrain and stopping you from becoming the god that you were meant to be. So in most cases, walking backwards while reeling is the best thing you can do, but sometimes walking forwards allows you to close the gap that normally you wouldn't be able to. But we'll cover that more in the Advanced Slinger Guide! Now for the complicated part of this guide, the chain. The chain that is attached to our harpoon works in a very interesting way. When you first start laying those beautiful snipes, you will notice that the chain has a timer that indicates when it's about to break, causing our bad need baddie to get stunned for three seconds. The chain by default has 100 chargers, which means that when all 100 chargers are used up, the chain breaks, causes us to be stunned. Different interactions cause the chain to break faster, so getting used to the timing would make a world of a difference. Whenever the chain is going through terrain, the color of the chain turns red and white to let you know that it's going through terrain. You know what I mean? Now, we're going to break down some math here, so if you can't keep up, don't worry. I'll do a general synopsis of how this all works, but I know there's some nerds in my comment section right now that want to know the maths, so we're going to get down to the maths and the basic and how the chain operates here. So, if a survivor is just speared, it uses 2.5 charges a second, causing the chain to break after 40 seconds. We're going to call this tension. If a survivor is speared but is struggling to break free, it takes up 15 charges a second and breaks in 6.6 .6 seconds. We're going to call this pulling. And if the chain has collision, it uses 20 charges per second and takes five seconds to break. We're gonna call this collision. <laughs> and now there could be combinations of the three that I said above that could cause the chain to break faster. So let's say for example, tension plus collision equals 22.5 charges a second and breaks in 4.4 seconds. Tension plus pulling equals 17.5 charges a second, so the chain breaks after 5.7 seconds. And then tension plus pulling plus collision equals 37.5 charges a second, so the chain breaks in 2.6 seconds. To make it simple, the more things interacting with your chain while pulling in survivors, the faster the chain will break. And before we go, for add-ons, I recommend using Warden Keys for the faster reload time and Tin Oil Can for the faster recovery after missing a shot. This will allow you to go for more shots without being punished as heavy for missing or just for going for shots. And here is also a build that will allow you to practice him more without having to worry about the game ending too fast without you getting any practice. And because so many of you asked, Here is my go-to build if you want to try it out. Now then, all you rootin' tootin' yellow bellies, this covers the basics on how to play Death Slinger. The best thing I can take away from this is to practice your mother <laughs> is to practice using your power as much as possible. 
Death Singer is a character that requires a lot of game sense, map knowledge, and understanding of his gun in order to do well with. So get into those games, try going for shots, lose, lose, and lose until you're comfortable with it. There is no shortcut or easy way to learn him, but with time and practice, I believe that y'all will be yee-hawing around the fog, just like me in no time. And if you guys like the video even a little bit, please like, comment, and subscribe. I plan on coming back on YouTube with a force. I want to do the advanced guide video for Death Slinger. I want to show you guys build videos, meme videos. I want to dive in and put all of my personality into my videos going forward because I want to pop out the content that I love and that I enjoy. And thank you all for watching. Y'all amazing. Peace.